Do your voice agents sound robotic or unnatural? Hello, this is Saya from Amplify Realty. Or you're speaking and the voice agent starts talking over you. Hi, Alejo. I'm looking to buy a Are home. Are you looking to buy? Or maybe they get confused halfway through the conversation. Has your property been listed yet? Listed? No, what do you mean? I'm, I said I'm trying to buy. There are very simple fixes to all of these issues. And we got to the last tab, but we're actually not done. Because this is the key to make your agents as reliable as they can possibly be. In my last video, I did a full deep dive of the Vapi platform. So in this video, we're going to uncover all the settings that we personally use for our clients. And closer to the end of the video, I'm going to show you the key to make your voice agents as reliable as they can be. This is the first time we've met. My name is Alejo. I've been an AI engineer for about six years and the co-founder of Amplify Voice. We help companies with setting up voice agents in their systems to create healthier flow of leads, increase revenue and reduce costs. If you have an idea that you want to brainstorm, book a call below. I'm always happy to chat. I want to thank one of our subscribers, Mohammed, for inspiring this video. I know you watching are going to get a lot out of this because everybody's been asking these questions. Maybe you have a burning question, so comment below and maybe you'll inspire the next video. And remember to join the school community where we're most active and we'll be sharing all our resources. We need to answer the question, what are the best settings for your VAPI agents? Let's dive in. Lesson number one, cheap, fast, high quality. You get to choose two, but you don't get to choose three. So there are going to be some trade-offs. For our clients, we've generally valued low latency with a very high quality voice, high quality conversation, while it might be a little bit more expensive. In my last video, I show you how to make those decisions for yourself, but this is our optimized setup. Feel free to copy it. So how do we balance these? I'm going to paste a prompt that we've used before for an appointment setter. It's actually a really long prompt. It's a few thousand tokens. And you just saw the cost go up from 0.07 to 0.13. Why was that cost going up? Well, because that's where the model cost, the LLM cost goes up. The longer the prompt, the longer the conversation, the higher the cost. So how do we balance quality, speed and price? We can actually have almost the same quality of reasoning as GPT-40 in the new GPT-40 mini. And you'll see that the cost went way down. It's about 30 times cheaper. And the latency also reduces by about 150 milliseconds. So we're getting much cheaper, somewhat faster, with very low loss in quality. For all the other settings and what they do, you can watch the other video. Usually we'll keep temperature at 0.3 so the agent doesn't hallucinate and steer off the script. Then max tokens 250 and we do like to detect emotions. Depends on the use case. We prefer to have it on for most of our use cases. We always publish so our work doesn't go away. Transcriber is going to be Deepgram. The, the default is going to be Nova 2. We prefer Nova 2 phone call. That's pretty straightforward. Voice. This is actually the voice I showed at the beginning. Azure tends to be very fast at about 200 milliseconds latency, very cheap at about one cent per minute. And they have some fair sounding voices, but they're most definitely not my preference and not my threshold of quality. So for our preferred choice is 11 labs. It has higher latency at 400 milliseconds and it does cost a lot more than Azure or other options, but it has the highest quality voices, at least for now, because there's a new contender called Cartesia, which is very cheap, about three times cheaper than 11 labs. It is slightly faster at 250 milliseconds and they have some solid voices. They're definitely still in development. So I'm going to let you find your own voice in Cartesia for 11 labs, though. We really like the voices Tony, King of New York. I really like John. Uh, let's see if he shows up. John and also Dakota. Yeah, Dakota H. Um, so those are all good options. There are a lot more for Australian accent. I really like Alex. Um, Alex and also Charlie. With Eleven Labs, you have a wide variety of accents. So you can go to the website and test them out or Click here and you'll see all the options. You can choose an accent or you can find them by name. For the model of 11 labs, we choose Turbo V2. And then for additional configuration, we like the office background sound. It adds some naturality. For punctuation boundaries, we leave it as default. Filler injection and back channeling are off, at least until they're perfected by Vapi. That's part of Vapi's intellectual property and it's getting better. But we have it off background denoising, we have it on, 
you would be surprised with how much background noise people actually call in once you've deployed your agent. So you want to have this on. Stability heavily depends on the voice that you're choosing. It depends on the quality of the recording and how much data they recorded with. So never go for the defaults. Do test after you found a voice that you kind of like, but it could be better. Mess around with this. Uh, stability lower is more expressive. Higher is more stable, but it could be monotone. So you can mess around with that. Clarity and similarity. You will want to keep this as high as possible. But once you hear static or some artifacts in the voice, then you would want to lower it from there. Style exaggeration. I like having some style exaggeration, although latency becomes slightly higher. Optimize streaming latency. I like having this at a one or a two. Lower values is higher quality, but lower latency. Higher values is very low latency, but less quality. I would never have this at a four. Then you really start messing with the quality of the voice. And at that point, you can just choose a different provider like Cartesia or Azure. So max go with three, but we go with one or two. And finally, speaker boost is on slightly increased latency, slightly increased quality of voice. We lean towards quality of voice. Functions is a deep dive in itself, but what we do for booking appointments is that we send them a booking link while the voice agent is on the phone with them and they can finish choosing a time, choosing a date, entering their information on their phone. It's a lot smoother, a lot faster. Everybody's happier. If we scroll down, we have end call function. We'll have it on unless it's giving any issues that sometimes it does. Again, it's getting better. Dial keypad, that's a very specific use case. If you have an outbound agent calling another company and navigating their IVR, press one, press two. Forwarding phone number, only when necessary when you have a live human transfer. And then end call phrases, I like the have a great day. For advanced settings, Unless the use case requires it, we have HIPAA compliance off, audio recording on. You'll see that if I turn HIPAA compliance off, which we've used before for certain medical or law firm use cases, the audio recording will automatically turn off. Unless necessary, you want to have audio recording on, video recording off, and then silence timeout. Since for our appointment setters, we use a booking link. So the user is booking the appointment on the phone while they're on the phone with us. Then we want silence timeout to be a little higher. I'll usually leave it, leave it at a max of 90. How long can they really take to book a, an appointment? And this only kicks off if they don't say anything in those 90 seconds. There's 90 seconds of inactivity. For response delay and LLM request delay, we'll have 0.4 for response delay and point two for LLM request delay. The response delay is, hey, make sure that there's this time that passes in between the user finishing speaking and the voice agent giving the answer. LLM request delay is very similar. The difference is how long does it pass between the user finishing speaking or taking a pause and then requesting the LLM to create a response. What this prevents is the voice agent speaking over the user, which we saw at the beginning of the video. So play around with these to find your best settings, but these are the ones we use. Interruption threshold, we leave at two. If the voice agent is speaking and the user says stop, it won't stop. But if it says, please stop, two words, then the voice agent will stop because the user wants to speak. Maximum duration, we usually keep at a max of 10 minutes, but they can be longer. And scrolling down, server URL, here we'll have a make endpoint that processes the end of call report, extracts information from it, and puts it into an air table. And this server URL is what we will put in there. Bam. Next, client messages. This is very specific for certain kinds of apps. We don't use that. And for server messages is what needs to be communicated to the make automation. For example, the end of call report. And you can want to limit this as much as possible to only the necessary, which are end of call report, function call, hang, not status update, but tool calls. Anything that says update is constantly going to send information to your make automation. It's just going to become really expensive very fast. So unless you need it, which usually you won't, you can leave these four on and everything else off. Voicemail message, we usually only do for outbound calls, but it's, hey, this is why I'm calling. Please call us back at this number. And then the inbound agent will take it from there. And call message again, have a great day. I explained the difference between this one and the function and call message in my previous video. 
And then idle messages becomes really relevant. This is actually a new feature. When the user is booking an appointment on their phone, then they won't be speaking. So you would want to, hey, make sure that they're still booking. For example, feel free to ask me any questions when 10 seconds pass by. You can have a minimum of five, maximum of 10. And because we know that the user is booking an appointment on their phone, we want to have this at a max of one. Just make sure that, you know, they're good and they can ask questions, but don't bother them every 10 seconds. And finally, for analysis, and this will depend on the use case, but for appointment setting, we'll do something like any objections or concerns raised by the potential client, whether an appointment was successfully scheduled, if scheduled, date and time, if not scheduled, reason why. Concise objective captures the essential outcome. Great, but we can go a little deeper. Success evaluation. This is actually really, really interesting. So this is one prompt that we use for the success evaluation. You'll get access to this one in the link below in the school community. So join us, you can take all the resources and start a conversation with us. It's essentially walking through a complex evaluation that we will complement with a rubric. And the rubric that we choose usually is a matrix. So it's actually quite dimensional in the different perspectives of how the call went. Finally, structured data is really interesting because it allows you to extract information from the end of call report that you can then insert into your CRM. So if you want to follow up with this client, you'll know the city that they're at or their name, their email, etc. And it'll send all that structured data through the end of the call report to make, and then you can put it into Airtable, your own CRM, etc. And we got to the last tab, but we're actually not done because this is the key to make your agents as reliable as they can possibly be. And that is the prompt structure. I've gone over this before, but I can't stress enough how much difference a good prompt structure makes. So I'll walk you through this very quickly and then I'll show you what my appointment setter actually looks like with the whole prompt fleshed out. So we have different sections that we divide by markup. This hashtag that you see at the beginning is essentially a new section. And the LLM is really good at interpreting these differences in sections. So a role, a task, some specifics, you see these hyphens, that's a list. Again, the LLM is good at capturing, oh, this is a list of things that I have to do. And specifics will refer to behavior of the agent, then the context of the type of conversation it's in. And steps, we see a numbered list, one, two, three, oh, I have to follow these in order. That will become clear to the LLM. Then an example conversation, super important, to give the LLM an example of a realistic conversation that it would have. Doesn't mean that you have to give it every possible branch that the conversation will take, but just having one clear example helps the LLM a ton. And finally, some notes like, hey, keep your sentences short, appropriate for a phone conversation. So let's actually see what this looks like when it's fleshed out. I didn't need to walk through every single detail because I actually made this prompt live in my appointment setting video. So you can see how I made that from scratch up here. But let's walk through the important parts. For role, hey, who are you? What's your name? Where do you work? And for task, what is the main thing that you have to accomplish? Specifics is actually really interesting. We're gonna set up some conditions for our agent to navigate through the conversation. And then some variables if you need the agent to be capturing information throughout the conversation. These are pretty standard, stay on topic, ask one question at a time. And we reiterate the objective, which is if the user has answered the qualifying questions, set up an appointment. We have the context of you're in a phone conversation with a lead who wants to buy or sell a property. This was the use case. And then we have the steps. This is where conditions really comes in. Ask the user their name and what they're looking for. You see that we have the bracket and we see that if the user wants to buy a property, follow these steps. Ask if they're ready to buy, pre-approved, if they're already working with a real estate agent. But if the user wants to sell a property, we have another bracket and we repeat the numbers, two, three, four. So the agent will know based on step one, which block to go through. Then independent of which block it took, we proceed to step five. Use the booking link function to send an SMS with the booking link and stay on the line with them in case they need any assistance. Simplify, simplify, simplify. Even if you have multiple branches that you want your voice agents to take, find a way to simplify the prompt so it's shorter, thus clearer to the LLM what are the steps that they have to follow. And then we show that example of those two branches in an example conversation. And here I actually made two examples. Q will be the question you ask, R is the caller response, 
if the user wants to buy, you see the double hashtag, that is a subsection. So example conversation is a big section, double hashtag is a subsection of example conversation. If the user wants to buy, follow this example script. If the user wants to sell, follow this example script. Finally, you have the available functions. So it knows that it can use them and it'll know when to use them. And notes, use casual language. Hey, here's some details about the function that you can use. Be enthusiastic, charming, and patient. This is more about tone and things to keep in mind. Specifics is more about behavior. So let's try using one of our phone numbers and actually give it a call. We'll change this to optimize setup. Okay, great. So let's give it a call. Speaker on. Hello, this is Saya from Amplify Realty. Who am I speaking with and how can we help? Hi, my name is Alejo. I was hoping to uh, buy a home. Nice to meet you, Alejo. Are you ready to buy within the next six months? Yeah, maybe, maybe in the next six months, maybe six, seven months. Got it. Um, are you already pre-approved for a mortgage? Um, I'm not yet. I'm going to need some help with that. No problem at all. Are you already working with a real estate agent? Nope, not, not yet. Actually, I am working with a real estate agent, um, but uh, I, I haven't had a good experience, so I'd look to, you know, switch. I understand. Switching to a new agent can make a big difference. Great. Amplify Realty can certainly help you with that. I just sent you a text message with the booking link to set your appointment with the team so they can assist you further. Go ahead and follow the link and I'll stay on the line with you in case you have any questions. Awesome. Thank you so much. This one takes a You're second. You're very welcome. I'm really... Mm hmm. You're very welcome. I'm really glad I could help. Awesome. Take your time. So, link got the link right there. Perfect. Just follow and the link. We got and book your the appointment. booking appointment. Oh, whoop. Oh. Okay. Well, we can choose the appointment there. Next. Awesome. Thank you, Zaya. Exactly. You're very welcome. I'm really glad I could assist you today. If you have any more questions or need help with anything else, just let me know. Awesome. So we saw the difference from the first call with a robotic voice talking over me to this, which was much more fluid. It was able to follow the conversation, go into the right branch, which was very important. And again, that's in major part because of the quality and the structure of the prompt. So highly recommend to use this prompt structure. And please pay attention to this. The best way to learn this is by doing it yourself. And you can get this prompt structure in our school community. It's all free. Please join, ask any questions. We're happy to help. And maybe you have an idea in mind of a project that you want to do or a client that you want to help. So book a call with me in the first link below. I'm always happy to chat, always happy to help. I hope this answered a lot of questions about the optimal setting for your voice agents. So I'd love to hear what you learned and how it made your voice agents better in the comments below or in the school community. Your voice agents will get better only if you get better. So remember, never stop prompting.